All right, today is uh, Friday, August 10th, 2012, and I'm going to be talking with Renee about um, uh, reversing her ulcerated colitis uh, symptoms and uh, Crohn's, and she probably has CFS and other related goodies, uh, which is very similar to what I had going on back in the 90s. So. Uh, we'll um, give her a call right now. Hello? Uh, yes, Renee, David, how are you? Hi, David. Good. All right. Um, well, um, so the, the diagnosis is ulcerated colitis and uh, you said uh, uh, they checked, and you have Epstein Barr also, or no? They think uh, they checked. For, they are, they did determine the ulcerative colitis. They weren't sure about the Crohn's in my upper intestine, but they were, they positively diagnosed me with a chronic ulcerative colitis. Yeah, which is really easy to fix. Um, is it? I yeah. um. I have been on antidepressants and, and anxiety medicine and ADD medicine for about 15 years. And in 2009, I took myself off of everything and stopped drinking alcohol and stopped all drugs. And then last November, um, I, stopped, I started throwing up blood and I started um, going to the blood coming out from both ends, basically. And they rushed me to the hospital. and basically told me I had 24 hours to live, and uh, I obviously survived it, but um, since then I've just been having the hardest time with food and um, just everything. I took myself off steroids because of what it was doing to me, and I just I couldn't handle it. Yeah, well, what steroids do, if you look under a microscope, um, if you go down to the DNA level, um, steroids actually fracture and... Um, they, um, I guess the best way to say it, or one way to say it, is they confuse the structure of DNA. So um, it's no difference from somebody, you know, opening a vein and putting in steroids to bulk up or, you know, using some sort of uh, steroid that's prescribed. It still um, changes the, the uh, structure of DNA. So unfortunately, then you're... Um, you know, regenerating cells with flawed DNA. So if you think about it, if you're building a house from a blueprint and your blueprint's wrong, and you know, eventually it's going to get to a point where the house falls down. Right. And so, uh, how long have you been off steroids? Um, about probably two months now. Yeah, it's going to take a while. Uh, it'll probably take, um, you know, for how long were you on them? Well, I was on and off of them. I was on it the first time for uh, about three months, and then I got off of them, and then they put me back on them again for about a month. Oh, and okay. Well, so you, so I mean, you, it hasn't been like years and years you were on them. No, okay. no, I, I can't. I've gained. I'm only five foot two, and I'm over 200 pounds now. Yeah. Well, we'll 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 shell that. That's not. I, I just. It would have it would have been a consideration if you'd been on them for a long time. All this stuff is gonna. All this stuff is easy to fix. Um, and instead of like going over your shopping list of symptoms, we'll just go after the big one, which is mm -hmm. uh, colitis. Yeah. Because you know, the the challenges. Um, and you also said that they uh, uh, did a uh, check of did they do X ray or ultrasound or how did they check to find that you're uh, lower uh, uh, bowel was uh, necrotized. They did both, and then they did a um, colonoscopy. Okay. I've actually had four colonoscopies since November. All right. So, um, so, uh, and w is there any live tissue in the the lower part of your bowel, or is it just all dead? No, it's live. It's coming back. Oh, okay, good. To life, and um, the top third of my my intestine, uh, lower intestines, are good, and the, the it's the bottom part yeah. that he said is the worst and so every time I have an episode that's the area that I'm in so much pain I'm literally like yesterday I was I threw up 10 times in one hour I just could not stop throwing up 
Yeah. So, I mean, the, the, what happens is if you if you can't uh, eliminate things out uh, your rectum, then it comes back out your your uh, throat. Um, I mean, it's got to get out some way, and so it's either throat or rectum, one of the two. Uh, those are the big orifices, or skin is the next one. Yeah. Um, so, um, what is um, what is your general eating style? I mean, what do you normally eat um, from day to day? Well, I, the, you know, the doctors keep putting me on this low residue diet, which is awful. It's all processed foods. And when I eat, try to eat a salad or something of a raw nature, I end up paying for it. And But I'm just so tired of eating processed foods because before I got sick, I was eating a salad every day. Veronica had me on you know, all organic foods, salads. Um, any of the meats that we, I bought were organic. I still buy only organic foods, uh, meats and things. But a lot of what I'm eating right now is just processed and. Well, what is what is what is that I, though? I, I'm not okay. asking about what the. I mean, d tell me exactly what you put in your mouth. Okay, um, like I will get um, like a hamburger helper or some you know noodles and pasta with uh, turkey, ground turkey. I'm eating a lot of chicken and turkey. Um, so tacos with flour tortilla. Sometimes cheese, but most of the time not. Um, the doctor took me off of dairy and wheat for a while. Uh, what else? What do I eat? It's just crackers with, you know, turkey. Um, just very simple stuff. Uh, All right. Well, if so, I eat any vegetables, so you, it's out of a can. Okay. So you're you're probably uh, going to dislike what I have to say, um, but uh, I mean, for me personally. Uh, I haven't eaten anything you listed for the last 30 to 40 years. Honey, and I, I, I have gotten off of all of it. Pardon me? I have gotten off of most all of this before I got sick, and then the doctor told me that everything I was eating was wrong. Well, well it, 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 the, the problem is that the doctor, he it's true what he said, but it's also false what he said. It's true that, here, here's the challenge, if you've got... Uh, any sort of uh, ulcerated colitis um, or IBS sort of symptoms, uh, until those are uh, complete, until you completely regenerate your, the tissue in your uh, bowel and all the lesions are closed, every time you eat any type of solid food, I don't care what it is, you're going to tear your intestinal tract again. So what that means is you can't put anything solid in your mouth, period until your digestive tract is regenerated. And if the doctor didn't tell you that, you should fire him for incompetence. Oh, he also put me on insure. Drink. Well, no, no, wait, you, I hadn't finished yet. Okay. So what, what the doctor told you, eating all this raw stuff, that's, that's wrong. I mean, that, that, he's true, that's wrong. That will, that will uh, tear your digestive tract. Insure, though, is not the right thing, that's wrong because that will destroy your intestinal tract too because there's nothing in it, it's just crap. Uh, it, it's just uh, isolate synthetic substances. There's no living thing in there that will regenerate tissue. Right, so, so here's the way you fix this. Mm -hmm. From this point on, mm -hmm. until all your symptoms are done, the only thing that you can put in your body are liquids that are um, their vital living fluids, period. That don't mean okay. insure. Insure, you know, that's just crap in a can. Okay. So what that means is live juice, not not juice from a grocery store. This is juice you make yourself. It's got to be fresh. Okay. So do you have a um, uh, do you have a any kind of uh, juicer? Well, Chris, my sister took me to Costco to buy a Vitamix, which I did. I just bought one. Okay, so I buy you. Have, blender, okay, so you I have. If I need to buy a juicer, I can buy one as well. Yeah, so the, there are two th there are two primary pieces of gear that you require is a a, a Vitamix, which mm -hmm. you already have, and a um, uh, a juicer, which um, uh, what uh, well b when, before we get off here, I'll uh, get your uh, contact information and I'll send you some uh, resources, but the okay. the the Vitamix is going to be. Um, 
that that will be good for some things. Um, and also, you know, keep in mind that uh, you you can you can blend vegetables up if you blend them sufficiently so that you've completely broken down the fibers. Okay. So, um, in other words, if you even eat a single nut, that's going to tear your digestive tract. If you eat yes, noodles, if you eat noodles, that's going to tear your digestive tract. And the reason it will is because the noodles are. Um, that's bulk, and so if you pass bulk over a an open crack, it's going to deform the crack. It won't. Oh. It won't. It won't. You know, there's no sharp edges to noodles. It's not going to. Uh, it's not going to cut like a knife. But what it will do is, if you've got a cut already, it will distent that cut and make it worse. Yeah, so it, it, you know, it don't. It, it don't matter what it is. If it's solid, it's going to interfere with your healing. Well, and, and to what you said, I did let go of my gastroenterologist because. All he kept wanting to do was put me on medicines, and the most insane pain medicine. I can't. I can't handle that. I. I work too hard to get myself off of all the drugs that I've gotten myself off to go back on them. I just can't, David. I can't. Well, you, you, there's no requirement to that. Uh, drug, uh, drugs only do one thing: they suppress symptoms. They. They never ever assist healing. Now, if you're in so much pain that you can't concentrate. Uh, temporarily using a um, you know a low dose pain medication just so you can uh, recover from the stress of pain is acceptable, but mm -hmm. you know using any kind of um, you know long term medication will only interfere with healing, and yeah. and even low dose pain meds are going to to some extent interfere with healing. So that's you know I've got to a point where I, I have to do something different and. I guess I'm desperate now, so well, I'm willing to do whatever it takes to get well. Yeah, well, and it's going to be fairly straightforward. It'll be simple. It may not be easy. You know, simple and easy are two different things. Um, sure. So easy is, you know, you you wake up in the morning and you get out in your car and go out into the day without any preparation. Simple is, you, you know, you keep a gallon of... Um, of uh, chocolate bliss, which I think you had over at our house, and uh, fresh juice. And anytime you go out of the house, you take a container of chocolate bliss and fresh juice and water with you so that you're not having to forage for any type of uh, nutrition or fluid while you're out in the world. Okay. So that's simple. I mean, simple is you have all this done and you, you know, throw something in a cold pack and take it with you. Easy is you go out without any forethought and just you know, you're at the mercy of whatever you can forage, which, you know, isn't going to help you out at all. Okay. Do you, um, uh, are you in a situation where you're, uh, do you have to go out and work? Are you at home all day, or how's, how's your day arranged? I work part-time. I had to, my, well, I got remarried, and my husband, you know, said I didn't have to work, but I do work part-time at a club store, uh, store, because I've quilted now. Um, three days, two to three days a week, and the rest of the time I'm at home. Okay, but, so so but they're that, very flexible. Yeah, so that means that um, the other thing is that you know every everything that uh, we're going to cover here, which will only take a brief amount of time, is you're going to do it at home and also wherever you go. That means if you go to work, if you go to your, you know, visit some friends. That means the only thing that goes in your mouth you control. All right, because every time you put something else in your mouth, you're gonna, you know, either reverse your healing or uh, temporarily suspend it. Okay. Uh, and for God's sake, you know, throw away that insurer. Okay. If, you, if you'd like to be, if you'd like insure yourself being sick, you know, drink insure. Yeah. That's no, like if you'd like. That's like if you'd like to have an emergency, you take emergency. Um, so, um, I mean, the, the simple things are um, uh, what you're look what you're looking for your target. And I know I, I had a similar situation to you, and I had to juice for 18 months. That's all I drank for 18 months. Now, I know way way more today. If I had to do it again, it'd probably take me you know um, only a few weeks to regenerate my digestive tract instead of 18 months. But that was back before the internet. And I just had to figure it out as I went along. And so the the um, the, the primary things you're going to be uh, drinking are uh, raw juice, and uh, that means go, uh, put through a juicer so the fiber is removed. Mm -hmm. um, and 
you can you can keep the fiber if you take that if you take the fiber out of your juice and just put it in plastic bags and put it in the freezer um, mm -hmm. uh, a few months from now after you've reversed all this you can take that pulp and you can make it into uh, crackers oh, okay. which are going to be really good um, do you have a dehydrator also no but I can get one okay yeah so uh, you know that's that's down the road when you start to uh, uh, getting yourself um, to a place where you can eat again. Just uh, you know, all that pulp is really good. If you have a, if you got a garden and can compost, that's fine. If not, save it for uh, when you can make crackers in the future. Okay. Um, so um, uh, the the first thing is juice, and when you're making juice, uh, people are always asking me what kind of juice to make, and the the simplest rule of thumb is to uh, you know. M take a shot at uh, a little bit of every color out of the rainbow. Okay. So, you know, a little bit of um, um, spinach and kale and things like that, uh, greens. Um, okay. uh, the reds would be you know, red bell peppers and tomatoes. And you can juice those seeds and all. Okay. Uh, carrots. Uh, beets are good. Um, anything that grows under the ground, you know, that sort of corresponds to your intestinal tract. Okay. And so, uh, you know, beets and carrots are going to be great. Um, cucumbers are also really uh, beneficial for regenerating um, digestive tissue. Uh, any any of the the um, uh, Culinary herbs like uh, parsley and cilantro are going to be very uh, instrumental for uh, regenerating tissue, and they okay. taste and they taste good too. Yeah, uh, also, okay. also whenever you make your juice, um, it'll be a little bit tricky in the beginning, um, and it's still a really good idea if you add a little bit of um, uh, warming type of uh, vegetables to your juice. And so warming vegetables would be things that are spicy like um, arugula, radishes, uh, any of the peppers like habanero or jalapeno. Uh, serrano peppers I'd probably steer clear of. They tend to upset some people's stomachs just okay. by themselves. Uh, also garlic and onion. Now here's the thing though is that, you know, start really slow like, you know, maybe put um, you know, one piece of one small little piece of garlic in a, a um, you know, a gallon of juice or something. Mm -hmm. And if that bothers your stomach, just leave it out. Or, you know, if it causes pain, just leave it out. Um, and, you know, try it every week or so until um, that works for you. Okay. Now, uh, you, you live in Katy, right? Is that where? Yeah. Am I remembering uh -huh. right? Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. So, um, uh, it's also, since you live in Texas, um, it's going to be uh, really important for you to get out in the sun a little bit every day. Okay. Uh, and uh, vitamin D um, is um, uh, absolutely essential to digestion and uh, assimilation of nutrients uh, okay. out of food. Now, when you're juicing, and we'll talk about superfood blends here in a minute, when you're juicing and doing superfood uh, liquids, it's... Um, much less of a requirement and it's still going to help uh, dramatically regenerate your tissue. Okay. So, you know, if you can just take a few minutes, uh, if you're reading a book or, uh, you know, if you take naps in the afternoon, just go out and, you know, sit in the sun for that. Okay. And uh, I don't know if you've got an enclosed backyard or something. Uh, uh, yes. Yeah, get, get as much sun on your body. So either wear a bikini or, you know, uh, <laughs> Go nude in the backyard, and also make sure that you get uh, try to get sun into your eyes. Even if your eyelids are closed, the sun will go through your eyelids and uh, get into your eyes. Okay. And the uh, the uptake of vitamin D through eyes, uh, as opposed to skin, is about oh, depending on what authority you pay attention to, it's usually most people uh, estimate it's over ten times as much vitamin D is generated through uh, eye, eye sunlight than through skin sunlight. Oh, wow. So um, what, you're, what you're trying to get is a, uh, a sort of a light brown um, uh, tone to your skin. Though, as I recall, you, you got pretty dark skin anyway, right? 
I'm not as dark as Christine yeah. and Christine and Veronica, but yeah, I'm, I'm uh, I've got brown. Yeah, so but but you you can tell when you've been in the sun, your skin probably is light enough; it changes slightly. Yeah, it does. Yeah, so what you're looking for is to, you know, get a slight uh, skin darkening and then just maintain that because that that darkening of your skin that's an indication that there's uh, vitamin D reserves that are okay. uh, deployed throughout your, uh, you know, your uh, tissue layers that can be accessed. Okay. Now, Chris gave me a recipe for a chocolate drink that she does in the morning. Is that going to be suitable for me, or do I need something different? I I don't know what... Um, okay. She does maca powder, agave, coconut butter, cacao powder, an acai smoothie pack, pristine yerba mat, hemp hearts, and cinnamon and water. All right. So here's the challenge with all that is... Um, Unfortunately, and uh, you can have Christina call and talk to me about this if she requires, is um, most people, when they, um, or most companies, when they purchase superfoods, they rarely come from the same place, and so the quality varies dramatically. Right. Which is, yeah, that's why we started packaging our own agave nectar because about half the time we bought it in the stores, it was great. And half the time, you know, it wasn't. Well, I'd tell you, it felt like I'd drunk a fifth of whiskey. Oh my gosh. And that's the way you can tell. I mean, there's a lot of um, incorrect press right now that all agave is bad. You know, that's like saying all electricity is bad because, you know, it runs electric chairs. It ain't right. And all you have to do to test agave is you buy a $15 blood sugar meter, which is how we source our agave. And the way we do it is we take a quarter cup of agave and put it in a cup of water and drink it. And the the agave we source, um, uh, uh, I, for me anyway, it doesn't even move my blood sugar. However, some agaves I've tested have moved my blood sugar, you know, 35% in 15 minutes. Wow. And that's going so high that, you know, that, that's when I start taking enzymes and opening up and, and drinking them to, you know, reverse that um, uh, buildup of um, uh, glycemic shock that's going on. Right. So, um... Uh, yeah, and she told me to buy all these things from you. Yeah, but I just didn't know if those were the if that was the right thing for me. Yeah, so with, uh, and I both dealing with different things. So the um, since you have a Vitamix, yeah, what I would say is just um, uh, the the three primary components that I use for making my chocolate bliss or our chocolate bliss uh, product and uh, vanilla agave, and then also a product called Tocos, which is a it's a uh, a whole rice that's had the sugars and starches stripped out with enzymes. Mm -hmm. So it's basically just pure antioxidants. Okay. Uh, and that stuff is just phenomenal for uh, boosting uh, tissue regeneration. Okay. Also, the Chocolate Bliss has got vitamin C and MSM in it, which is going to uh, dramatically uh, assist in tissue regeneration. So would your Fresh Start Pack be good for me? The chocolate, uh, it's got what, chocolate bliss, agave, this fiesta mole, caramel digestive, and sunflower salt? Or do I need to start with something else? Yeah, let's, uh, let me just, um, let me kind of uh, go over what's in that. So chocolate bliss and vanilla agave, and then let's see, uh, uh, the, the tocos that you uh, require to add there. Uh, fiesta mole is a... Um, a tomato-based uh, superfood blend, mm -hmm. and so um, another thing that you can do. And now again, keep in mind that um, I usually, when I blend my um, ingredients to drink as a liquid, I, I run that Vitamix on high for about 30 seconds, okay. so that what happens is everything is you know broken down into extremely small particles, so that so there won't be any tearing. Uh, and so, so for example, with uh, Fiesta Mole, what you can do is you can take, um, uh, you can just take a, a Vitamix and uh, put um, like a quarter cup of Fiesta Mole in a Vitamix, and then put um, a cup of mixed vegetables. Uh, I, I like edamame and corn and you know, Brussels sprouts, whatever, whatever mixed, just frozen organic vegetables that you can get a hold of. 
and then you just take uh, two cups of water and uh, warm it up on the stove, not till, till it's boiling, just, but just till it's warm. And pour that in the Vitamix and blend that up, and it makes some of the just the best ever soup. Because if you if you just drink juice and you know chocolate bliss, you're going to get um, um, out of balance because you won't have the savory or the non-sweet end of the the uh, nutrient spectrum in there. Right. So I go back and forth. So that's my primary diet is I you know drink chocolate most of the day and then I have one meal in the afternoon which usually revolves around um, uh, fiesta mole. Okay. You can also just uh, throw. Um, uh, you know, the normal, like, um, uh, South American types of, uh, produce into your, uh, soup, like, uh, onions and garlic and tomatoes and avocado, uh, just okay. throw it in there and, and that, um, will help out. Now, here's another trick, um, is, uh, in the juices that you make um, uh, put it put just a pinch of sunfire salt in there mm -hmm. to uh, bump up the increase the mineral ratio a little bit and also in your um, uh, whatever uh, uh, juice you make and um, chocolate drink and soup or whatever whatever you make uh, if you open an enzyme you shouldn't take any kind of capsules either uh, any, okay. any type of capsule thing that you're taking, be sure and, and open it up until your all your pain symptoms are gone. Oh, okay. Yeah, don't take any capsules because that's the same thing as pasta. If you if a capsule, uh, the ca uh, cap uh, those uh, tablets or caplets are even worse. Those things are just full of toxic debris. You should never take one of them anyway. Oh, I didn't know because I've been drinking uh, taking uh, melatonin at night. Yeah. So so here's the thing. Anything you take that ain't in a food form is going to either defer or reverse your healing at this point. I don't care okay. what it is. Because okay. if, if God didn't make it, it ain't right. I, I mean, I don't know how to, else to say that. I mean, you know, that, that makes sense. that's one of the big problems with uh, human intelligence is we, you know, somehow we think that we know better than the entire matrix of creation as to what we should ingest. And it's just wrong. Yeah, yeah, there ain't no trees growing melatonin capsules that I've ever seen. Right? <laughs> Got it. Uh, the only okay. the, the only reason that you that a person needs melatonin is if their body's so far out of whack that they uh, are unable to produce that hormone, and it's much better to feed all your organ systems so that you just produce it when you require it. Okay. So um, uh, now the thing about enzymes when you're opening up. Um, when you're uh, putting enzymes into any fluid like this, uh, mm -hmm. the enzymes that we have are so powerful that they'll actually start to digest the material and it'll change the taste. Uh -huh. And so what I would suggest is rather than, you know, like, you know, putting enzymes in a whole batch of chocolate bliss or a soup's okay if you're going to uh, drink it all at once mm -hmm. uh, or, um, uh, you know, juice if you're going to drink it all at once or if you're going to drink it really quickly. Uh, but what you can do is, uh, do you have a little ball jar that has a screw on top? A what jar? Oh, do you know a ball jar, a canning jar? They're just little glass jars. I don't know that. I have those. Uh -huh. Yeah, so what you can do is uh, if you take a little bit of whatever you're drinking and open uh, one or two enzymes up in it and just shake it, uh, uh -huh. the, the enzymes are just loose powder and they, um, uh, they uh, mix up really easy. Okay. And so here, here's the other problem with... Uh, um, ulcerated colitis is that if you, for example, take an enzyme capsule and that enzyme will move through your digestion, digestive tract, and it will normally, um, at least the, the capsules that we have, will normally break down in your stomach. If for some reason they don't, though, and they enter into your small intestine, or, you know, it's doubtful, but if they did enter into your large intestine before they broke down completely, if it, you think about if you've got a, an abrasion that's raw meat, you know, the sodium bicarbonate lining is, is uh, broken when you've got a, an ulcer, and so there's no insulation from the digestive process that's going on in your digestive tract. And so if that enzyme moves along and happens to be, you know, sitting on top of one of these um, ulcers when it uh, dissolves, that enzyme will eat right through that and make it even worse. 
And so it's way better um, uh, to take the enzymes and open those up, um, open the capsules up, and you know make sure that's uh, dispersed through all the fluid you're ingesting rather than you just taking a capsule. Okay. Yeah. Okay, got it. So uh, what do I need to get to start this? Because I've also been doing some fruit smoothies in the Vitamix. Uh, in the mornings and uh, with a half a cup of, not a half, a fourth a cup of yogurt, some water, and just fruit. Okay, so here's the thing. Yogurt is going to completely reverse any healing and make everything worse. Okay. Anything, anything from an animal, There, there's no good thing that comes from an animal. Okay. Because the reason is that yeah, there are nutrients in that those substances. That is correct. However, if you check your pH after you ingest that, you'll see your pH spike acid. And if oh. your pH spikes acid, that means your healing just stopped. Now your body is, instead of um, putting resources towards healing, it's just trying to put resources towards alkalizing your fluids so it can you can stay alive. Okay. Which means that, first off, it's going to leach minerals out of your uh, fluids, that's free-floating minerals, and then go after your soft tissue, which is going to interrupt your healing. And then if it's bad enough, actually leach calcium out of your bones, which is why... Uh, people end up with osteoarthritis and osteoporosis. Oh, it's, it's primarily, like I had a, a great aunt, um, and she called me up, this was years ago, and said that um, she'd like lost four or five inches over the past year and went to the doctor, and he said she had raging osteoporosis, and she had to eat like, you know, two pounds of red meat a day and drink a gallon of milk. And I said, you know, if you do that, you're going to be dead in a few weeks. Mm -hmm. And she took her doctor's advice and she was dead in a few weeks. Oh, my gosh. And, you know, there's nothing you can do with people like that. You just have to, you, you just have to report the news and what they do with it, whatever they like. Mm -hmm. uh, but that, that's the problem with all those animal products is they, they spike the the um, pH levels so far acid because they're so toxic um, that you know you, the, that leaching process starts where you first you suck all the minerals out of your fluids then your soft tissue then your cartilage then your bone and okay. so you know that, you know the only uh, yogurt you should ever eat is uh, coconut yogurt uh, that you make yourself from your own um, uh, raw coconut meat from coconuts you open with uh, kefir strains that you um, acquire yourself that are, um, you know, they aren't uh, derived from animal strains. Got it. So okay. I think that's probably beyond the scope of what you're going to enjoy doing right now. Yeah. <laughs> I was drinking coconut milk for a long time, um, but I was getting it through whole foods. Yeah, that's uh, a, so that's not really coconut milk. Now, see, anything you get that ain't inside the, the fruit, Ain't real. Yeah, so the coconut, I mean, we eat um, co uh, coconuts coming and going here, but they're actually whole coconuts, uh, young coconuts from Thailand, and we take a machete and open them up, drink the water, scrape the meat out, and then use the meat. Okay. That's real. The real coconut water is where you open a coconut and you scrape out the meat and put it in a blender with the water and blend it up. Okay. Anything else is not, not ain't right. Okay. Um, and uh, the other thing too is, you know, make sure that you're, uh, if you're uh, eating any kinds of, any kind of, or ingesting any type of nuts or seeds with anything you're doing, that you soak those first and that they're from a, a good uh, uh, organic source. Okay. Uh, in general, though, I would suggest that um, most nuts and seeds, um, besides what's in the, the products that you get from us, are probably going to, um, uh, they're probably going to encourage a higher level of inflammation that's going to interfere with your healing. Yeah. So I, I probably would just for, you know, at least for a few weeks until your pain symptoms are uh, completely uh, gone, then, um, uh, you know, I, I, would, I would just say skip those for now. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I agree. Right now, I, I know nuts and I do not agree right now at all. Well, and it's probably the way that you're eating nuts, too. So, you know, when people say, you know, they're allergic to nuts, really, you know, that's a long conversation because the first question is, well, where'd you get those nuts? If you got them out of, right. a, 
If you got them out of a bulk bin at Whole Foods, they're rancid and they've been burnt beyond all belief. Right. No, so, I'm not allergic to them. I love nuts. I can't eat them right now because they really upset my colon. Yeah. So I mean, the best the, the best way like the best way to eat nuts is to uh, soak them overnight. Uh, you know, if you have a really strong craving for some kind of nut, um, you know, my suggestion would be you pay attention to that. But what you do is you you buy raw organic nuts and then you soak them overnight, and then you put those in you know some kind of um, uh, soup uh, or um, uh, you know choc- your chocolate bliss or something and blend them up. You know, until you've atomized all the material in there. Okay. Perfect. Okay. Got it. Um, let's see. Um, I, I'll I'll just talk about a couple of other things here too, really quickly. Uh, that are they're dirt cheap and they're probably going to be very useful. Uh, the first thing is um, uh, these uh, uh, their nutritional flakes that are. They're, they're a type of nutritional yeast that's grown in a specific way to where they're, um, it's, it's grown in a very nutrient-dense um, environment. So it's, um, a lot of nutritional yeast tends to cause people to overgrow fungus. And this particular one seems to work really great. And they're dirt cheap. I think they're like, I don't know, 12 or $14 for a, you know, a canister that will probably last you for a month. Uh, and the, and the the reason that they're really good is that they're it's the one of the richest sources of uh, B vitamins, mm-hmm. uh, which are very um, uh, instrumental in healing and also uh, digestive um, uh, the whole digestive tract process. Okay. And the other thing is chia, which is another dirt cheap um, uh, product. And and the way you you know what chia seeds are. Uh, you uh, you remember seeing those chia pets as a kid? Yeah. Well, that's that's what they're. You you shouldn't grow that on a chia. You should well you should grow your chia pets and then eat the stuff off the chia pet. <laughs> so um, the way that you work with chia seeds is um, uh, they they have a specific type of um, they have a specific type of uh, fiber and essential fatty acids and amino acids that tends to just be a uh, uh, intense uh, tissue accelerator uh, when you're doing regeneration. Okay. And here's how you work with chia because it's a little bit challenging. Um, mm-hmm. So uh, what you do is you take um, uh, a tablespoon of chia seeds and put in a ball jar you know, one of your glass jars, and then six tablespoons of water, six to eight tablespoons of water. So one one tablespoon of chia and what, a half cup of water is a, you know, probably a a good ratio. And you shake that up and put that in your fridge. And the next day that will be a solid mass of gel. I mean, those chia seeds are extremely hydroscopic. They just just lap up the, the water. And so what you what you do then is um, you take that chia and just uh, it's flavorless, and so you can add it to anything. So you uh, when you're making your chocolate bliss, just uh, you know dump a quarter cup of that gel in there and blend it up. When you're making your soup, uh, dump a quarter cup in there or you know whatever uh, seems to a quarter cup will be four tablespoons. And that the um, the fiber is especially tends to act like a a um, uh, a knitting agent or like stucco that is going over the fractures in your uh, those ulcers and will tend mm-hmm. to it'll tend to create a uh, almost a makeshift bandage which will oh. see when the the pain you're feeling there no there are no pain receptors inside the digestive tract the pain receptors are outside so whenever you eat something and you feel pain uh, one of two things you you've either got gas that's distending your digestive uh, piping and you're pressing on some other uh, nerve bundle or worse in your case you got stuff leaking out of your gut into the surrounding tissue and you know our bodies ain't meant for that Mm -hmm. Uh, you know and and the pain receptors man that's like a you know emergency three alarm fire 
Yeah. And, you know, there's stuff in, out of the intestinal tract leaking into tissue, and the, that will just set those nerve endings off. And so the, the beauty of chia, mixing it in with all the other stuff you're drinking, is the is the chia will um, work with the enzymes that you're mixing in with things and all the other nutrients, and it'll 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 create almost like a it's almost like a you can think of it like a reverse cast. Like if you break your arm, you put a cast around your arm, right. and the chia working with all these other things will actually sort of make a reverse cast where it'll kind of coat the whole inside of your digestive tract. And that won't hold up if you eat something solid. I mean, it'll break again. It's yeah. it's it's very flexible. However, a little bit of chia mixed in with all this other stuff um, may give you some, um, you know, what what will appear to be a magical pain relief because it, you know, it's basically just creating a um, a temporary patch over all the the uh, leakages in your intestinal tract. Okay. And more than likely, that will, um, you know, dramatically um, uh, give you a, a great cessation of pain or a reduction of pain anyway. Okay, great. Um, and you said add one teaspoon in a bowl to six, I mean, one tablespoon of chia to six tablespoons of water? Or yeah, or you can just do a half a cup. I mean, you've probably got a half right. a cup measuring cup, yeah. So, I mean, the ratio that we usually use is one to six, so six tablespoons of water, one tablespoon of chia. Okay. And so, you know, that's just the general. And, uh, yeah, by the next morning, you'll have a huge gel. Okay. Yeah. That sounds good. Yeah, I, m all my pain is on my left side, so I know now I've learned that that's my descending colon. Yeah, that's your descending colon. Uh, so uh, no pain on the right side or in the center, so your transverse colon is all right? Yeah, pretty much that. I don't get hardly any pain over there. Once in a while, but not very often. Most of the pain and discomfort I feel is, you know, a few hours after I've eaten, sometimes it'll go half a day, and then I'm doubled over in pain, and then the next day I'm throwing up all day long. Yeah. All right, so, um, yeah, so I think this this little uh, simple procedure will dramatically uh, help out with all that. Now, here, here's okay. the here's the thing about all this is, though, I, you know, I, I continually have these people ask me, you know, I'll go over stuff like this with them, and they'll say, well, how long do I have to do this for? And my response is, well, how long do you like to feel good? Yeah. So this ain't like, you know, you do it for a little while and do something different because that's what I got you in this, it's, you know, jam. It's so it's a, it's a, you know, it's a loda. It's a learn once, do always, uh, you know, and a kiss, it follows the kiss principle. Keep things super simple. And so it's a learn once, do always, and even after you um, your intestinal tract is regenerated, I suggest you keep this same uh, sort of eating style up, and then just mix in you know one small meal a day of solid food if you're hungry, mm -hmm. and if you're not, then just skip that. Like you know okay. if I'm you know if I don't really have a desire for a bunch of solid food, I don't eat it. So for now, staying away from meat and any kind of any animal product is. Well, and that's a good rule of thumb. That that's a good rule of thumb to have to the day you die. Okay. I mean, you shouldn't eat any of that. There's no there's no there's no good um, there's no um, redeeming value of eating any type of animal products because whatever small nutrition you extract out of that, you'll have to come up with far more energy to extract it than you'll ever get out of it, and you'll burn up more longevity substances dealing with the toxicity than you can ever uh, regain. So that's the problem with eating animal products is you're, you're constantly making bank withdrawals and you can never make a deposit when you're eating animal products. Uh, so you know if you're if you're looking for a long comfortable uh, life, then animal products you know that today or yesterday is the last time you ate those. Okay, got it. So um, yeah. So the, um, I I also made a recording of this, so if, um, I'll I'll um, make that available to you, so you oh. don't you know you don't have to. You know, try to, you know, I'm sure you've been I've making... I've been writing a lot, of, a lot of it down. Yeah, I'm sure you've been taking notes, and it's always yeah. good to have, um, you know, conversations like this captured so you can go back and uh, listen. And also, if you come across somebody else with a similar situation, instead of you trying to, you know, somehow, you know, translate all your notes to them, just tell them, yeah, well, if you're really interested in doing something, go listen to this. Okay. That'll be... Yeah, a... I have a friend who had her colon removed. Oh, Lord. And that was their, 
response to helping her and God love her. She's she's always having problems. She didn't she does she carries one of those bags. Yeah, her. so I, I guess I've I probably been good to start our conversation here with my story. My story is that um, when I was two I filled my uh, stomach with gasoline. And that completely, you know, necrotized a lot of the my ability to, um, you know, necrotize meaning uh, killed uh, my ability to assimilate and um, uh, digest and assimilate food. And so when I got to be 17, it got so bad that I went into the doctor and they and the doctor, you know, they did all these tests and. And they told me that they estimated 80 to 90 percent of my entire digestive tract from my esophagus to my rectum was uh, ulcerated. And that the only hope they had of saving my life was they had to cut out everything from the, about the middle of my stomach to my rectum and I'd have to wear a bag for the rest of my life. Now, I'm 17 years old. I have two thoughts right off the bat. First off, dating is going to be a bear with yeah. a bag. Next off, I thought, now wait a minute. These guys are supposed to be smart, but it sounds to me like they're dumb as a bag of hammers because if the best they can do is to cut out everything out of my gut, that's just stupid. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I, I was only 17 years old, but I knew that I was smarter than all these doctors if that's the best option they could come up with. Because, I, because you know, it's the difference between people that learn critical thinking like my father taught us critical thinking, meaning that you, you think of in terms scientifically. And the first place I went was, okay, so I've got this set of symptoms, and so you doctors are so stupid. So basically what you're saying is there's no one in the history of all time who's ever had these symptoms that's reversed them without chopping out their intestines and wearing a bag. Right. And that's just that's just wrong. I mean, that's you start think you just start thinking through this logically, and you think you know basically these doctors they're just after money. I mean, they're 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 after money, and that might be that they're just strapped for time. It might be that they're either stupid. You know, there's no cure for stupid. Ignorance right. is just a lack of information. They might be ignorant. They might just have a lack of information. Uh, or they might just be stupid and recalcitrant and they, you know, have had other clients that have recovered and they just don't want to do the diligence to find out why because, the, again, that's going to interfere with their money. Because right. if everybody's well, there ain't, they ain't no need to be hacking out people's intestines and, you know, having them wear bags and then now they got all these other symptoms so they get to come back and get drugs and other surgeries and it's just a big can it. of worms. Every time I have an episode, which has been four now, this is my fifth one, they put me in the hospital for anywhere from five days or more, load me up with steroids and all kinds of crap. I feel worse getting out. Um, and then the pain medicine, I don't even remember what I, you know, I, I can't live that way. I just can't. No, and you, and you shouldn't. Um, so um, uh, my suggestion is whenever you are faced with a, a um, dramatic health challenge and some doctor tells you that you've got to take some radical approach like, you know, uh, surgery or drugs or chemo or radiation, I mean, the first question to ask is, has anybody else since the beginning of time had these symptoms and reversed them naturally? And, and the answer is always yes. So, you know, the way better thing is to, especially, you know, it's we're living in the Internet world now, so all you got to do is go search online and search for somebody that had what you had that, that uh, found a way to fix it naturally. Just do what they did. And uh, now, fire your I doctor. Will, I will tell you that I they did remove my colon back in December. I mean, not my colon, my gallbladder. Is that going to affect any of this? Well, I, I mean, know it affects a lot of what I eat now, also. Yeah, I mean, um, the I mean, the 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 problem with removing anything is that you know there's a reason it's there. I know. I've had problems ever since, and had I known. Then what I know now, I would have said no, but they made it, you know, I mean, they made it that it sounded like it was dire and I had no choice. Yeah, I mean, so that's that, another reason why I don't want to go back to, to them. Yeah, so, I mean, the, the, the challenge with, um, you know, removing your gallbladder is... Um, with the uh, with the suggestions of eating style that I've suggested to you here, um, you'll have no problems. If you were okay. eating if you were eating a heavy animal product diet, 
you would yeah. be you would be in severe pain. I am in a lot of pain. Be, a lot. Because you you won't be able to um, build up and store bile to be able to process um, all mm-hmm. that. Uh, you know, basically, you know, bile. I mean, most people think of that as a digestive agent. Really, what it is is it's a it's a uh, detoxification agent that's excreted in the hopes of breaking down, you know, some sort of animal. Um, you know, fatty amino acid compound into simpler components that can be eliminated before the person dies. So is that why, like, when I do throw up, that's all that comes up? I mean, it, sometimes it's food, but mostly it's that by it's bile. Bile. Well, yeah. so um, you know, well, you're still producing um, uh, bile. It's just it has no place to um, uh, store itself. So, in other words, your body's really smart. Right. If if you're if you're eating a bunch of stuff that requires bile to process it, your body says, "Okay, I got to make this bile." And, you know, I don't. I ain't smart enough to know that the the storage tank, the gallbladder, don't it ain't no longer there. It's gone. So I'm just going to make all this bile, and you know, it's just going to go directly out of your liver duct into your mm-hmm. digestive system. Uh, or it's going to back up through the liver and, and you know, well, I, I guess it's getting into your digestive system some way. They, uh, it's always a, a, a question of how they, you know, rewire your system because there's different ways to rewire it. But, you know, if you're throwing up bile, that means that it's excreting into your digestive tract. And so that will probably um, dramatically change once you get to a point where you're uh, no longer requiring to produce lots of bile. Okay. And after, you know, you've um, after you've gotten to a point where your uh, pain symptoms have completely um, uh, ceased for a few weeks or maybe mm-hmm. even a few months, then uh, probably a liver cleanse would be in order okay. just to make sure that um, uh, your liver is operating at uh, full steam because you're you know, your liver and your gallbladder work together, and if you have no gallbladder any, anymore, your liver has got to take up the slack. Okay. So. Got it. All right. Well, I, I think that's uh, I think that's plenty of information for one day. I mean, we, okay. we've been talking for about an hour, so that's... Um, okay. So what do I need now? I can give you my credit card number and information. All right. Well, what... This- uh, what I'll do is I'll have um, uh, Aaron, our uh, person that um, handles the the uh, orders, um, I'll have him uh, get in touch with you. Okay. Uh, for your credit card and shipping and everything. Okay. And I would guess that the things we talked about um, mm, are probably going to be around 300 or 350 dollars for two or three weeks. Okay. Is that going to work with your budget? Sure. No, that's fine right now. Right. I'm, I mean, it's either give it to the hospitals and the doctors or that aren't working or give it to something for something that it will. Yeah, and uh, probably what I'll also do is uh, substitute the 90 cap uh, digest with the 250, 270 cap, which is um, much cheaper, and okay. you're going to require uh, plenty of enzymes. Okay. And so basically anytime you drink uh, fluids, um, you know, make sure you're having enzymes. And uh, before I get off here, I'll get your uh, email address and uh, I'll send you a, a video of how I'm making my chocolate bliss too. It's it's pretty straightforward. Oh. Okay. I, I'm, I make it by the gallon too, so you know, your, okay. your uh, kitchen time will be optimized. Okay. And, and also I'll um, send you a link to... Um, uh, a uh, inexpensive uh, juicer you can get, and you know one of your one of your kin may have one that you can borrow for a while too. Okay, great. Thank you so Excellent. much.